Most roller coasters are permanent installations found in amusement parks, but some are designed to be portable. These traveling coasters are repeatedly assembled and disassembled at carnivals and fairs across the globe. The portable coasters you find in the United States aren't too crazy, but you have some shockingly large ones in Europe. So in this video, I will rank the top 10 traveling coasters I've personally experienced. To be eligible for this list, the coaster must have been assembled and disassembled at carnivals or fairs. However, I will count the ride if I experience that exact coaster at an amusement park as well. Before starting the list, I need to note six notable traveling coasters I have not yet experienced that would have had a very good chance of making the list. First, there's Eurostar. This intimate inverted coaster features an extremely compact and forceful layout. However, this ride is said to have become extremely rough. Second, there's Thriller. This Schwarzkopf featured four very forceful loops, and it had a very good chance of placing in the top three based on my love of similar rides. This is another one that has been scrapped. 3. I have not experienced the portable Schwarzkopf shuttle loops. The best example still in operation is Bullet at Selva Magica. 4. There's King. This Soke coaster has a series of swooping drops, turns, and helixes, but it has over the shoulder restraint so it may not be strong enough to make this list. 5. There's Super Railway. This unique, multicolored coaster has riders seated in line and it appears to have some shocking airtime moments from the POVs. Sixth, there's High Miler. This looked to be a baby prairie screamer. It had a series of drops, all of which appeared to have airtime, plus several turnarounds. This ride closed after an unfortunate accident a decade ago. Number 10, Heidi the Coaster. This is a newer generation Revershawn spinning coaster. This one features an overbank after the first drop, this is a really fun, disorienting element because you start spinning right before it. The rest of the ride has the usual layout. You have the lateral heavy turns at the start, the punchy first drop, and non-stop spinning in the second half. But this one is plussed even further. First, there's this bizarre launched lift hill. You slow down right before you crest the apex. It's there solely to boost capacity. Second, there's onboard audio that made me smile with all the yodeling. I rode this coaster at Munich Sommer in der Stadt. Number 9, Holland Blitz. This is a one of a kind spinning coaster. You have a super long train, and most of the ride is indoors, all except for the ride's largest drop. The layout is pretty tame on its own, as it lacks any notable forces. But the cars spin for a large chunk of the ride. You don't spin super fast, but the rotation is consistent. And you have all sorts of lights and lasers on the inside which makes the ride far more dizzying than it otherwise should be. I've been on this ride at both Munich's Oktoberfest and Dusseldorf's Rheinkirmes. Number 8. Spuck. Some may call this a dark ride, but I count it as a coaster because it has a large, multi-story, gravity-powered layout. From a thrill perspective, the drops are just okay. What makes this ride are the scares on the inside. The animatronics are your usual carnival quality, but they are very well timed and get extremely close to the car. And I got the scariest jump scare in my life in 2019 when I rode this in Hamburg. Skip ahead 10 seconds if you don't want to know what happened. Towards the end of the ride, this attraction can have a live actor. I did not know this, so imagine my shock when he swung a rubber axe and hit me right in the throat. Number 7. Drifting Coaster This is an interesting creation from Revershawn. The first drop is shockingly steep and gives some airtime. Then the layout doesn't look too inspired off-ride. It's pretty repetitive. But the trains make the experience. They are able to swing, and they do so ever so violently. You swing out beyond the horizontal. You get way more swinging action than your ordinary suspended coaster, as you abruptly rock side to side in the S-Bends. I was lucky enough to get a ride on this at the 2017 Oktoberfest. Number 6. Looping Star. Schwarzkopf is arguably the greatest manufacturer of traveling rides, and it's time to start a run on these coasters. This looping coaster features a forceful vertical loop, followed by some fun helixes, and every installation of experience across the globe still runs smoothly. The most notable example still in operation is Silver Bullet at Frontier City. Number 5. Alpinabon. This Schwarzkopf foregoes inversions in favor of swooping drops and helixes. If you ride in the back, the first drop has insane laterals. 
Then there's a large camelback with solid floater airtime for all. The middle section is a series of nice turns and bank drops, especially because each valley on this coaster has good positive Gs. Then the finale surprises you with this awesome S hill that gives a really nice pop of airtime. And despite how many times this coaster has been moved, it tracks very smoothly. I've experienced this coaster both Munich's Oktoberfest and Dusseldorf's Rheinkirmes. Number 4. Doppel Looping or Testtrecke These coasters no longer travel the European fare circuit, but I have ridden these double looping Schwarzkopfs at their location stateside. I've ridden Colossus at Lagoon and Laser at Dorney Park. The highlights are the two strong vertical loops that can cause me to gray out. But this layout has some decently forceful helixes as well, and some surprise bursts of laterals on the transitions. Number 3. Olympia Looping Considered by many to be the best traveling coaster of all time, I was admittedly a bit underwhelmed by the Schwarzkopf. All five inversions are fantastic though. They have very strong positive Gs. However, the rest of the layout felt pretty stale to me. The turns and helixes lack the usual force you'd expect from a Schwarzkopf. I know some also have issues with this ride's accordion-style restraints causing headbanging, but that's not an issue for me as long as I sit up straight. The pacing is my biggest issue, but this is still an impressive ride for a fare given its size and strength. It usually makes an annual appearance at Munich's Oktoberfest and Hyde Park Winter Wonderland. Number 2. Wild Mouse XXL This is my favorite traveling coaster still on the fare circuit. I never thought a wild mouse could be this crazy. This ride is nuts. This ride used to be your standard mock Wild Mouse, but it was transformed into Wild Mouse XXL in 2012. The ride's height was doubled, and two large and zippy drops were added at the start. This leads in you taking the old layout with way more speed, and there are zero brakes too, so you get some of the wildest and most violent laterals on the planet. Then the hills at the end also pack more of a punch with all the added speed, I was getting powerful ejector airtime on several of them. That is unheard of for a wild mouse. And to top it all off, you have a genuinely fun queue line that has funhouse style elements. This ride usually appears at Dusseldorf's Rheinkirmes Fair and Hyde Park Winter Wonderland. And coming in number one is Dryer Looping. I experienced this coaster when it was relocated to La Feria de Chapel Tepic when it ran as Chimera, and it was arguably the most intense coaster I ever experienced. Now part of that may have been due to Mexico City's elevation, but this coaster was downright powerful on its own. All three loops pulled over 5 Gs, and unlike Olympia Looping, this ride has a complete layout. The drops are steep and whippy, the helixes have good force to them, and the lack of braking leads to some surprising airtime pops in the second half. And thankfully, this coaster will live on Indiana Beach after a grand refurbishment if you still want to experience it. So those are the top 10 portable coasters I have experienced either on the fair circuit or at an amusement park. What are your favorite traveling coasters? Let me know down in the comments. Likewise, let me know if I missed any notable traveling coasters. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.